Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is Tend to Life. The case we're going to be talking about is one that everybody I'm sure has been seeing all over the news lately. It's one that tons of you guys have been asking me to cover. I covered it a little bit yesterday in a live, but it's the case of missing seven-year-old Harmony Montgomery. Now, I have been doing a deep dive on this case the last 24 hours. I have come across a lot of information, lots of photos, and I've got a lot of opinions because, as you know, I always am counting those red flags, and this case has a ton. So smash that like button and let's get into it. Tend to Life with Annie Elise starts right now. All right, guys. So like I mentioned, my name is Annie Elise and this is Tend to Life. So if you are brand new stopping by for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy what I have to say and the case video today. And if you do, make sure that on your way out, you hit that subscribe button below so that you are notified of upcoming live streams as they happen and new case videos as they get posted. And for all my returning subscribers, thank you for joining me again today. I love you guys so much and I am so happy to have you here. I'm going to just like do this video and then post it right away. I know I don't want to be a broken record. I keep telling you guys, YouTube is just flagging me, flagging me, flagging me. In fact, one of the videos that I posted today was flagged for literally 12 days and I had to argue with them to finally get it approved. So we'll see how this one goes. I'm going to try to do my best to not use the words that they don't like and we'll see what happens. So let me just start from the beginning here, guys, and I'm going to do a quick brief recap of the case and what we know, because as we've been kind of talking, it's been a lot of piecemeal information. And so I really wanted to do a video where we have it all in one place and what brings us current with the updates that literally just came out moments ago in this case. So Harmony Montgomery is a seven-year-old little girl out of Manchester, New Hampshire. She is the daughter of a woman named Crystal and a man named Adam. And she is described as blonde-haired, about four feet tall, and weighing 50 pounds. She also is legally blind in her right eye, so she wears glasses. Just the cutest little girl out there. I mean, this little face, I just can't. She's so extremely cute. Now, the details surrounding Harmony's disappearance are very confusing and very unsettling as well, probably equally confusing and unsettling if I'm being honest and perhaps the most confusing part about this entire case is that she hasn't been seen since October of 2019 technically the last people have said they've seen her but the last known factual sighting was October 2019 now you would think that she would have been reported as missing pretty soon after that right wrong she was not reported as missing until december of 2021 this year nearly two years later so she hasn't been seen since she was five years old and she would now be seven years old now in this last confirmed sighting in october of 2019 it was during a wellness check at her house so it is logged factual i mean we know the system's broken, I believe factual, but it was logged and it was a wellness check on her house. Now, Harmony's father, Adam, states that the last time he saw Harmony was when she was with her mother, Crystal. However, Crystal is saying the opposite. So what's going on here? So as I said, the most troubling detail about this entire case is that not a single police report was filed until December of 2021, over two years after she was last seen. And unfortunately, Harmony was in and out of foster care multiple times prior to her disappearance, and this was due to her mother's alleged drug use. Now, Crystal has since reportedly gotten sober and clean as had, and has made numerous attempts to reunite with Harmony. I don't know if that's verified. That is what she's saying. That's what people close to her are saying. But I think if she has gotten sober, huge pat on the back. That is no easy feat. And congratulations in that regard. Does that excuse you from everything that we're about to talk about? Not quite, but it is still a milestone nonetheless. Now, what kicked this entire search for Harmony into gear was an email that the mayor in Manchester actually received in December of 2021. He then forwarded this email to the Manchester Police Department, and this launched the full-on investigation into the whereabouts of Harmony Montgomery. During the police press conference that was held on December 31st, it was stated that the email was primarily regarding issues with follow-up from the DCF agency. Don't get me started on them, guys. Police did not state who that email was from, but they did say that it was pretty vague. However, since this case has now erupted into 
public domain and everybody's talking about it, it has been said that Harmony's birth mother, Crystal, is the one who sent that initial email to the mayor's office. Law enforcement has not confirmed that yet at this time. However, that is what's being said. And why would you send an email? Why wouldn't you go into the police station and say, hey, something's going on. My daughter is missing and I haven't heard from her or seen her in nearly two years. Now, allegedly, Crystal had reached out via this email because she was trying to get in contact with Adam and Harmony for months at the request of Harmony's biological brother's adoptive father, Blair Miller. Sorry, guys, I know that's a lot. That's a mouthful. So Harmony has a biological brother named Jameson, and Jameson was adopted by Blair Miller. Reportedly, Blair was getting in touch with Crystal, trying to get the whereabouts of Harmony because little Jameson wanted to send his big sister some Christmas presents. And Jameson was adopted through foster care back in November of 2019. However, Harmony's case at that point was closed, and she was reunited with her father, Adam, which is why Harmony wasn't adopted by another family or put into foster care. So Blair had reached out to Crystal because he wanted to reunite the siblings for Christmas or pass those gifts from Jameson along to Harmony and Crystal was then unable to get in touch with Adam. Jameson's adoptive father Blair has also said that he and his husband are very close with Crystal and that they've tried to allow the relationship between both Harmony and Jameson to continue but that it has not been successful which now I think that's due to obvious reasons because Harmony has been unable to be located. And what kills me about this whole thing is that Harmony wasn't reported missing and it wasn't brought to anybody's attention because somebody noticed she was missing or noticed there was bad behavior in play somewhere. It breaks my heart because the reason this happened is because her baby brother wanted to give her a Christmas present. I mean, that is just heartbreaking because then how do you go back to that little boy and say, I know you wanted to give this Christmas gift to your sister, but I'm so sorry, we can't find her. Now, no one has seen pictures of Harmony since she was just five years old. And Adam, Harmony's father, was granted custody of Harmony back in early spring of 2019 by DCYF. And allegedly, Crystal had not had custody of Harmony since back in July of 2018. So she had gone at that point, what is that, maybe about nine months in the foster care system before being able to be reunited with her father, Adam, when he was awarded full custody. So Adam is awarded custody in early spring of 2019, and Crystal says that that was actually the last time she ever saw her daughter, and that it was via FaceTime in April of 2019. Now, something that stuck out to me is Harmony has not been enrolled in school since 2019. And when she was enrolled, she was not enrolled in any school in New Hampshire. She was enrolled in the school in Massachusetts where her mother, Crystal, resided. But we know that Harmony at this point was in Adam's custody. Now, this leads me to believe that Adam never enrolled Harmony in any school upon receiving custody of her and didn't have plans to. And as if that isn't disturbing enough, the two parents that are in this case and intertwined with all of this, in further disturbing details, Harmony's great uncle named Kevin, who happens to be Adam's uncle, of course, if you just, you know, do the lineage there, he has now spoken out on what he knows about the situation. And Kevin, Adam's uncle, has said that the last time he saw Harmony was in October of 2019 at a house in Manchester where Harmony lived. Now, according to his uncle Kevin, there was an altercation that occurred on that day in October, as well as previously in July of 2019, shortly after Adam had received custody of Harmony. Now, Kevin says he made a CPS call in July of 2019 after seeing Harmony with a black eye and hearing Adam admit that, He bashed her around the house, stating that he had left Harmony in charge of watching her infant brother while he was in the bathroom. So Kevin also stated that he witnessed Harmony being spanked extremely hard on the butt, her being forced to stand in the corner for hours, and being ordered to scrub the toilet with her toothbrush. Guys, a a five-year-old, a five-year-old, and this is the kind of punishment that her father, who just was awarded full custody, is putting on her. It is, ugh, it is awful. Allegedly, when Adam gave Harmony that black guy, it was because her infant brother, who she was supposed to be watching and babysitting while Adam was in the bathroom, which, hi, I'm sorry, a five-year-old does not babysit an infant. Let me just throw that out there right now. But apparently, the black guy incident stemmed because of that, because her infant brother started crying, and Harmony then was found holding her hands over her infant brother's mouth to stop him from crying. I have so many opinions and things to say about this, guys. First of all, hello, infants cry. 
it happens. It can't be planned. You can't tell them to stop. They're going to do it whenever, whenever they want. All my parents watching, you know what I'm talking about. But what really got me about this is the fact that she gets this black eye from her father because her infant brother's crying. She's holding her hands over his mouth to not let him cry. And I can't help but wonder, was she doing that to not get in trouble herself for you know, as punishment for allowing her brother to cry, even though she wouldn't be allowing, he would just be crying. But like, was she trying to do that to protect herself so that her father didn't hear him crying so that she wouldn't get in trouble? Or was she doing that to protect her baby brother to ensure he didn't get hurt from Adam lashing out on him for crying? Which either way, it's the action of a terrified little girl. And I'm sorry, but little girls don't just automatically have that reaction or instinct to do that. And that leads me to believe that this was not the first time an altercation like this happened. Adam's uncle Kevin further states that because he took action on what he witnessed and had called CPS, that Adam cut off most of the Montgomery family. And for many people who know the family, it seems like multiple calls had been made on Harmony's behalf before she went missing. And this just infuriates me because it is such a great illustration of what a broken system we have. We don't need to go through the laundry list of cases that we all know about in which calls were made, visits were happened, and all of these red flags and alarming behavior were evident and nothing was done and it resulted in a missing or deceased child. So to me, I feel like this just puts the spotlight once again on our broken system. And unfortunately, I don't have the answer as to what the fix is with that. But I don't know, guys. I don't know. It's just how how do we fix this broken system? Allegedly, on November 18th, the Manchester police received a call from Harmony's mother, Crystal, reporting that her daughter was missing and that she hadn't seen her in over six months. Now, this call prompted a police employee to contact DCF again in New Hampshire, and the agency was then unable to locate Adam Montgomery. Big freaking surprise, right? So for several days, police spoke to family members in attempt to locate Harmony and locate Adam, including speaking to Adam's brother, Michael, who also raised concern about Harmony. And Michael recalled that in his last physical contact with Harmony and Adam, that he had suspicion and concerns that Adam was physical towards Harmony. Michael recalled in an affidavit that Adam was super short with the child, and he had also learned through another family member that Adam had given Harmony that black eye. While all of this is unraveling, police did search a house in Manchester, but no information has been released on those findings. However, However, there are pictures of an area in that house being dug up and a hole in the backyard. Not looking good. The house was sold in May of 2020 and belonged to Adam's grandmother, reportedly, but it's believed that Adam resided there, which is what prompted the search. When Adam was finally located by law enforcement on, I believe it was New Year's Eve of 2021, he was living homeless in a car with his new girlfriend, not his current wife, Kayla. Now, before we go into what happened in that conversation with law enforcement, Let's just quickly talk about his current wife, Kayla. Kayla spoke with investigators also on New Year's Eve, and during that conversation, she said that the last time she physically saw Harmony was in November or December of 2019 before heading into work. At that time, Adam had allegedly had told her he was driving Harmony back to Crystal in Massachusetts. Kayla claimed she never saw or heard from Harmony after that day. Additionally, Kayla stated that she had not seen her husband, Adam, since October of 2021. Kayla did admit that she had seen Harmony with a black eye in the past. However, she explained that Adam told her it was caused by one of their children striking her with a toy in the face. So during that conversation with Adam, when they come across him in the car with his new girlfriend on New Year's Eve, just, you know, a couple weeks ago, authorities say that Adam made contradictory statements, including that Harmony was fine and that he had seen her somewhere recently, before later admitting that he hasn't even seen his daughter since November 2019 when her mother came to pick her up, which is weird because we also heard that he said he drove Harmony to her mother's. So which is it? Eventually, Adam stopped answering question and did not exhibit much emotion or reaction to hearing that his daughter has not been physically seen or heard from in two years. Then Adam said, and this kills me, if I'm not under arrest, I'm leaving. My opinion, he knows that they're looking at him. My opinion, he knows what happened to Harmony and he is lawyering up, shutting down. Well, luckily, Adam was arrested just this last Tuesday on January 4th. So Adam Montgomery, just 31 years old, was booked on an array of charges, including felony second degree, 
I can't say this word because I'm scared YouTube's going to flag me, A-S-S-A-U-L-T, in connection with that 2019 altercation against his daughter, Harmony. He also was charged with one misdemeanor charge of interference with custody and two misdemeanor charges of endangering the welfare of a child pertaining to Harmony. Now, in a new twist that we just learned about this morning, Kayla Montgomery, Adam's wife, was also arrested, and she was charged with welfare fraud for collecting food stamps on Harmony's behalf. So, here's the thing. We know Kayla isn't Harmony's biological mother that Crystal is, but she obtained $1,500 worth of food stamps from December 2019 to June 2021. Remember, Kayla says she hadn't seen Harmony since back in November or December of 2019. So, why are you collecting food stamps for her, Kayla? So this tells me two things. One, if she truly did believe that Harmony was with Crystal and that Adam had brought Harmony back to Crystal, she's a criminal and chose to continue fraudulently obtaining these food stamps in Harmony's name for her own selfish gain. Or two, she knows exactly what happened to Harmony and still continued to collect food stamps in Harmony's name for her own selfish gain. Now, what's very interesting, though, that I discovered after reading Kayla's arrest affidavit is in this arrest affidavit, in part of a redetermination process for that collection that took place back on January 7th of 2021, the DHHS worker noted in the file that Kayla seemed confused about whether or not Harmony lived there because she goes to her mom's house every other weekend, according to Kayla. But Kayla... You just said you haven't seen her since November or December of 2019. Now you see her every other weekend all the way through January of 2021. Which is it, girl? Tell us. Which one is it? This leads me to believe that Kayla knew exactly what happened to Harmony and she knew that Harmony was not coming back. I think that's why she lied about her being there every other weekend. And now then when the police were questioning her, she, I believe, did say the truth in the sense that she has not seen Harmony since November or December of 2019. Do I think it was truthful that she said it was because she was going back to Crystal's? Probably not. But I do believe that that probably was the last time she saw her. My personal opinion on this arrest, because it is just on criminal fraud charges regarding the food stamps, I believe that this is a strategic move on law enforcement's part. I believe it's a move to get Kayla to talk. And we already know that she and Adam now are no longer together. He's moved on even though they are technically married, I guess. I believe that she's going to flip on Adam. That's my truthfully, that truthfully is my gut feeling in this whole thing. I think that she's going to flip on Adam and I think she's going to work out her own deal for immunity or a lesser sentence. Um, I think she has the answers. I think she has the information. And I think that the reason they arrested her was to probably jolt her and scare her and hopefully get her talking. Kayla was arraigned today and was granted 5000 cash bail, and this infuriated everybody, and it was very disappointing, but given the charges, it would be hard to deny her bail because everything else is unrelated and is just circumstantial at this point. However, in that order, she cannot have any contact with Adam, which hopefully they you know, are monitoring and make sure that that happens because... We can't allow them any time to get their story straight with each other. I'm hopeful that there's going to be a flip that happens here. The reward for missing seven-year-old Harmony is now at $60,000, and police and FBI are all searching for her. They are not giving up hope that this will be a rescue rather than a recovery, and they are just asking anybody who has any tips, who has heard anything, who has seen anything, any sort of tip, no matter how small, please share it and call it in. I hate to be a pessimist, but I unfortunately am of the belief that that Har- little Harmony is no longer with us. That I hope I'm wrong. I God, I hope I'm wrong, and I hope I'm proven wrong. But I can't help but shake this feeling that this a hole did something to her because he was not, you know, suited. Not even suited, but because he didn't want the responsibility of being a parent. We know that he allegedly had anger issues. That he took those anger issues out on Harmony at five years old. We also know that he has a history of substance abuse. He's now reportedly homeless, living in a car with his new girlfriend, obviously, like living this life that is not conducive to having children to take care of. And it's my belief that he did something to Harmony. Truthfully, that's my belief. And I get it, innocent till proven guilty, but guys, it's my channel, my opinion, and I'm sharing it. And I said yesterday in my life too, I don't yet know based on the facts that we know and the information we've been given. I don't quite know if it possibly was a physical altercation that went too far and resulted in an accidental death 
or if it was something that was premeditated and calculated because he just didn't want harmony anymore. I haven't been able to reconcile that yet. And um, I want to gather some more facts before I share my opinion on that. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below because I'm very interested to hear your take on this. I'm going to be following this very, very closely, guys. I am hoping that we can just get answers, get justice, and get people talking um, and figure out what happened here. And again, going back to this broken system, how can we on earth fix this? And it's just so unnerving to hear that multiple calls were made, that it had been two years and nobody checked on her. Nobody cared enough to check on her. And I'm sorry, that's getting me emotional right now, guys, but nobody cared about this five-year-old girl enough to check on her. Why? Why is that happening? If you're not suited to be a parent or if you think it's too much responsibility, there are a million different choices that you can make. A million different choices. Hell, go into my email. Tell me and I'll take your kid. Like, honestly, guys, and I'm not saying that in a fleeting way. It's like there are so many options out there. Do not resort to this. And I know it's tough because everybody has the stress of this pandemic and whatever is going on in the world today and the current state of everything political. I mean, it's just like the worst. It's like we're literally on tensions that are civil war hyped, so I've been told. And it's just like there are so many other options. So please just take a moment to collect your thoughts, take a deep breath and figure out an alternative if you ever find yourself in a situation like that. I'm going to follow this case closely, guys, and I'm going to keep you updated as soon as I know more and continue to share my opinions and my theories with you. So again, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so by hitting that subscribe button below. Please give this video a thumbs up on your way out. It'll help spread awareness, help push Harmony's story out there, and hopefully help get us some answers here. And as always, if you want to join Patreon, the link is in the description box below. That's where I'm parking all of these videos that YouTube just keeps flagging and won't let me post. And that also will give you access to our Discord group chat, which is super easy. It sounds way more confusing than it is, but it's basically an app on your phone where you can um, be, you have access to a group chat with me and other subscribers and true crime fanatics where we talk true crime all the time. So check that out if you're interested. All right, guys, until the next case, stay safe. Please stay safe and please take care of your babies. All right, guys, talk to you soon.